In this project, we're deploying Microsoft SQL Server and AWS using Amazon RDS for SQL Server, a fully managed platform as a service offering from AWS. Platform as a service features include automated backups, patching, monitoring, and built-in high availability, allowing you to focus on applications instead of infrastructure. We'll begin by creating a dedicated VPC with separate public and private subnets. The RDS SQL Server instance is deployed in private subnets with no public endpoints ensuring that it can only be accessed from trusted sources inside the VPC. To manage the database, we provision a lightweight Ubuntu EC2 instance and a public subnet running admin, a browser-based SQL client, with security rules that allow controlled access to the RDS database. This setup provides a secure web-based management interface while keeping the database itself private. For demonstration purposes, we load the Pagula sample database adapted for SQL Server. This models a fictional DVD rental store. Pagula includes realistic tables, relationships, and data, making it ideal for hands-on testing and exploration. By the end of this project, you'll have a fully private SQL Server environment in AWS, complete with secure management access and sample data, all deployed end-to-end -end with Terraform and shell scripts for repeatability and easy customization. This build can easily be adapted to your own projects. Let's take a look at the architecture diagram. We are in US East 2, and we first create a VPC. And within that VPC, we have two subnets. One's private, and the private one is where we're going to put the SQL Server interface uh, inside of RDS. And then the second subnet is public, and that's where we use a, a T3, I think it's small instance, which is running Ubuntu, and it's going to use the admin or web interface. This is public, so you can access it from, from the browser. Now, when we provision the database, we're going to put our admin credentials in a secret. So there's no hard-coded credentials in this. It's all generated on the fly and stored in secrets. So the workflow when we, have to, when we do the demo will be we'll go to a browser. We'll go to the uh, web server that admin is running on. We'll put in our credentials for the credential manager into the SQL server, and we'll be able to log in and see all the data. All right, now let's talk about the prerequisites for this project. We have a video out there, that's the AWS Terraform Easy Setup, that does a very simple uh, VPC and EC2 instance, and it just focuses on what you need to do and to set up for the build properly. So what we want to do is you need an AWS account, and in that AWS account, you have to have a secret key and access key so you can do builds. It's all covered in this video. Then we have to have the AWS CLI. We do that, use that as the glue between the builds. And then you need the latest version of Terraform. All right, now let's do the build. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code here and bring up my Ubuntu development environment, paste that in. Now, the first thing that we do is we have this script in all our projects called Checking D, and that's going to make sure that you have everything set up to do a build and that you have everything installed correctly. So we've, it's, it configures Terraform, AWS, and checks it's all there. So now we're ready to do the build. So I'm going to do uh, apply. Now the build takes about 10, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. OK, before we go to the fast forward, uh, I just wanted to say that if you have any questions about the build or having any problems, please uh, use the comment section to answer, ask your questions. OK, the build has completed. So what we're going to do is go into the AWS console and take a look at what got built. So first off, make sure you're in uh, US East 2, Ohio. Otherwise, you won't see anything. So what we'll first do is take a look at the RDS instance. So you click on Aurora and RDS. An instance. So you click on that. And we've got the SQL Server database. It's a single AZ, 2A, and it's a size of... M5 large. So we click on that and let's go to configuration. So in the configuration, what you'll notice is, you know, underneath the covers, Amazon's actually provisioning an EC2 and installing the software for you or as an AMI probably. And so all this just corresponds to what that EC2 is on the back end. So the instance class corresponds to the, you know, the instance type that's provisioned. And then you've got the storage and that's going to be the EBS volume. So we have deployed with, uh, I think, I think this is 2022. We've got two CPUs at eight gigs of RAM. So it's relatively modest. I think this is kind of the smallest I could provision. 
and the master username is SQL admin and then the password is going to be in secrets. Now, as far as platform as a service features, you go to maintenance and backups, and this is where most of it is. You've got the ability to apply maintenances. You can specify a, a maintenance window. Um, then you've got the backups and restores, and I enabled it for seven days, but you can, you can customize this and replicate to different regions. So that's the platform as a service features. Um, if we go to monitoring, it sets up some CloudWatch alarms. And so you'll see not a lot of activity, but it, it configures the CloudWatch alarms for you. So this is again, a platform as a, a, as a service features. And so in general, you know, if you go and look at SQL Server for RDS, it's fairly basic and rudimentary compared to the MySQL and Postgres options. They, they have a lot more options. Amazon has invested a lot more into those database providers. I mean, they have their own flavor, Aurora. So this looks, fairly basic, but you know, it gets the job done if you need SQL Server in AWS. So that's it for the RDS instance. So now let's take a look at the EC2. Now this RDS instance, remember, is private. We're on a private subnet, no public, not publicly accessible. So let's go to the EC2. And this is where we have the admin or interface running. So we'll click on that. And in the admin or interface, it's running on this Ubuntu 2404 instance. It's relatively small. It's T3 micro, so it's cheap, easy to run, and it has a public DNS. And so when we do the demo, we're going to use that public DNS and log in and see what is what the database has. So that's the second part. The third part, which is the last thing we'll show in the console, if we go to Secrets Manager, what you will see is uh, SQL Server credentials. And I can retrieve secret value. And here you will see the uh, password and user. The SQL admin is the, is the user ID, and this is the, what we use to log in. OK, for the demo, the first thing we want to do is we run, that, run our validate script again to get all our endpoints. So I run validate. And the first thing we'll do is copy this. This will be the um, web interface. So I'll go back to my browser. Click on that, bring up the interface, and it's going to come back and say, OK, what do you need to log in? So we we'll first need the database name. So we'll go back to our validate, and you'll see the database name is right there. Copy that. Go into the database. It's SQL admin is the user ID. And remember that it's in secrets. So go back to secrets. In secrets, you'll see the SQL admin and the password. So let me copy that password, put it in here. And the database we want to connect to is Pagula. So I will log in. And here is the fictional DVD store rental database. So we're going to look at uh, three tables, and then we'll do some joins on the table. So the first one is the actor table. So let's look at that. And what you'll see is th these are kind of nonsense names. They've kind of made up. They've combined uh, actors and actresses like Joe Swank. And you know, you'll, you'll notice them, Helen Voigt. So they're just kind of silly little names, but they're all made up. So that is the actors. Um, and then we want to look at films. So in the films database, uh, the, the films, these are also um, all sort of uh, nonsense made up things. Uh, just pick an, a, a, an emotional display of a pioneer and a technical writer who must battle a man and a balloon. And they spell balloon wrong. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, again, these are just sort of nonsense names, but these are a list of movies. And there's foreign keys in here. So like the language ID, a fanciful document or Frisbee. If I click on six, that's going to say that one is in German. So that is the, um, the films. And then the third table that we're going to look at is the film actor. And this one is a series of assignments where you use those foreign keys to say this actor is in this film. And there's quite a bit of them. There's five, 5,462. And so what we're going to do is there's three tables, all with foreign keys. We're going to do a couple of simple queries to show, uh, simple joins to show how this database works. So let's go back to um, our documentation and let's go up here and let's do this first query here. We have a couple of joins that are pretty simple, but um, show you how the joins work. So let's go into here and let's go to SQL command, put this in here, hit execute. 
and you will see that we have the film and the actor. So it takes those three tables, the film, the actor assignment, and then the actors, and generates this table from a join. So we have that query, and then we have a second query where we go into here, and I'm going to go back to the thing and do a boop, boop. And I'm going to put that in there. And what you're going to see is now we have the data. Uh, we have the title of the movie. And then all the actors are listed as a comma separated file. So it's a little bit easier to, to read. But it uses the same three tables. The film table, the actor table, and the, the, the actor assignments. So at this point, um, you know, you can do all sorts of uh, joins and things in here to look at the data. There's lots of these uh, foreign keys that you can explore. Um, ID. So it's all, uh, you know, a, a very workable database. So at this point, I think, you know, we've done everything we're going to do in this database. So I'm going to log out. And so now uh, we're at the point where we want to be a good stewards of our, our uh, cloud account. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to close this and I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go back to my environment and I'm going to do clear and destroy to destroy. And the, the destroy is a bit quicker than the create, so a little under 10 minutes.